and maybe more. I mean, it was impossible after impossible after impossible. Eben Alexander, a Harvard-trained neurosurgeon who was a skeptic when it came to religion, survived a near-death experience, and he now carries the memory of what he says was a journey to heaven, a journey that all his scientific training cannot explain. On November 10th, 2008, Eben awoke with a searing headache. When his wife Holly checked in on him, he was having a tremendous... It was just like no one was there. Eben believes Holly is right. He wasn't there. Did you go to heaven? Yes. I mean, in, in every sense of the word, that's what my, what my experience showed me. His first recollection, he says, was being a speck of pure awareness in a dark and murky underworld. And then I was rescued by this beautiful spinning white light that had a, a melody, indescribably beautiful melody with it, that opened up in, into a bright valley. Just an incredible, rich, ultra-real world uh, of indescribable complexity. God was there, he says, and he encountered him through an orb of brilliant light. He soared on the wing of a butterfly with a beautiful young woman as his companion, and the young woman gave him a message to take back from heaven. You are loved, you are cherished, there's nothing you have to fear, there's nothing you can do wrong. It's a beautiful vision, but heaven? A lot anymore. This proves that our, our soul, our consciousness, our uh, spirit doesn't depend on the existence of the brain and body at all and easily is actually freed up to a much higher state of knowing when it's freed from this body outer surface, the human part of your brain, what's the next step? I would have told you, well, obviously, the next step is a state of no awareness at all. That is the biggest shock of the journey, is that, in fact, as this all progressed, and it did seem that that earthworm eye view went on for eons, because I promise you, I had no memory moment to moment of time. I had absolutely zero memory of my life before coma, not a tiniest bit. And so it did seem to go on for a very long time. The good news, it, it did not last forever. And what happened next was this slowly spinning white light that came towards me, a very clear and pure light that had fine white and gold tendrils off of it. And this white light came towards me. And the best part about it is it came packaged with a perfect musical melody. And it turns out that I had been aware of sound in that earthworm eye view, that very primitive existence. The sound was a pounding, monotonous sound, like someone smashing on an anvil over and over again. Just a steady rhythm. And uh, it was a very cursing sound. And yet, as this pure white light came towards me, it was coming with this perfect musical melody, absolutely beautiful. And as you will hear, Sound, music, vibration, frequency is the way that our souls transcend in these levels. It's one of the reasons why sound, hymns, chants have been used for thousands of years to help engender deep transcendental conscious states uh, in any kind of spiritual uh, broadening of consciousness, religious ceremony, etc. And that sound is absolutely essential to the work I do now. I'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes, but um, that melody, came, spinning melody, as I called it, came towards me, and it opened up like a rip in that ugly earthworm eye view, and it was a rip that opened up into this brilliant, ultra-real valley. And I remember ascending up into this valley, up into this brilliant greenery, lush with life, absolutely fertile. And I had no body awareness, but I was moving up through it because I was a speck on a butterfly wing. Now this was not a butterfly like some entomologist here on earth can give you genus and species. This was the real deal. And butterflies in that realm, just like we often have dragonflies, butterflies, and hummingbirds that are messengers from that realm, from souls of the departed loved ones. And there are thousands of stories out there. I'm sure there's some in this room about that very phenomenon. But in that realm, butterflies are far more powerful and amazing than they are in this realm. And I was a speck of awareness. And it turns out, on this wing of this butterfly, um, 
This was one of millions of butterflies, and they were looping and swirling in this beautiful river of love and color and life beyond description. And I remember how we would dip down and go through that lush greenery, and there would be flowers and blossoms, buds on trees that would open up even as we flew by, I remember the rich textures and colors beyond the rainbow. And so beautiful. And in that beautiful valley, as we would come up and ascend above all that greenery, I could see that there were hundreds of souls dancing. And when I wrote it all up weeks later, as I came back to this world and was trying to record the whole experience, I described them as being dressed in peasant garb, very simple clothing, yet beautiful colors, and tremendous joy and merriment. And there were lots of children playing and dogs jumping, and it was just a wonderful festival. And it was all being fueled because up above, in the velvety black skies above, were pure spiritual beings, orbs of golden light, swooping and swirling in formation, leaving sparkling golden trails, emanating these hymns, chants, anthems, powerful like a tsunami wave, crescendo after crescendo after crescendo of the most beautiful music, waves washing through me. And that's what was fueling this incredible joy and mirth going on in this gateway valley, as I came to call it. Now, the important thing to understand is that that gateway valley was much more real than this world. Far sharper, crisper, and more real than this. This is very dreamlike by comparison. That was a deep, deep mystery to me for a long time, trying to understand that ultra-reality. It's very hard to put it into words. And when I would first describe that to people and talk about the ultra-reality, people would say, well, is that like high-def TV? Well. <laughs> It's a lot more than that. The way we know things there, you don't see with the eyes, you don't hear with the ears. You become others to feel the emotional power of existence. In fact, uh, often if you get into the near-death experience literature, you read a lot about uh, the tens of thousands of life reviews that people describe. You know that old saying, your life flashes before your eyes. Well, it's very true, and that's what near-death experiencers tell you is that you go through every bit of, the, of your life, all the crucial parts that are there to teach you about the lessons of good and bad that are still residual lessons for you to learn, to help you and your higher soul and your soulmates, your soul group. And the judgment is not by any higher power, it's by our higher soul. That's what's doing the judging in that realm. And that's when we go through those life reviews, it's not some vague, sepia-tinted memory these are sharp, clear, crisp, absolute reliving the events more powerfully than when we live through them in the earthly realm. And we have to feel the power of our decisions, the emotional impact on our fellow beings. So if we lived a life handing out pain and suffering to others, we have to feel that in that life review. But we have to feel it far more sharply than they felt it here in the material realm, which is a pale, dim reflection of that far more real and crisp world of that, that gateway realm and the realm between lives where we reunite with our higher souls and where we reunite with our soul mates. And in the glaring, beautiful, all-loving light of that infinitely powerful God, that is the setting in which we relive those events and then plan our next incarnations for coming back in. But it is a very crisp ultra-reality. This is all about those lessons that we're here to learn. And the coin of that realm is love, that unconditional love that goes far beyond the phrase, far beyond those words. And of course, so many who have had near-death experiences and shared death experiences and other similarly spiritually transformative experiences know exactly what that's all about, that unconditional love. And the reason it's so important for all of us to get is because we're here in soul school to learn those lessons of that love. And what we find is that that unconditional love has infinite power to heal. Then knowing that it's simply by following a pathway that is one of manifesting that love as best we can. Love is the coin of that realm. And the more we can serve as conduits of that love, because our very consciousness is a direct 
absolute connection to the divine, infinite healing power of that all-loving source. And by serving as conduits for that and allowing the love to come through us to our fellow beings to show compassion, forgiveness, mercy, acceptance, that's all that matters. And that's what these lessons are all about. And that's how our souls ascend, is by getting closer and closer to that perfection of that love in ascending towards that oneness with the divine. Now, it turns out that this beautiful girl on the butterfly wing, as I said, she never said a word. She didn't have to. Her thoughts came straight into my awareness. Now, of course, I had no words or language, so it was pure conceptual flow. But when I wrote it all up a few weeks later, when I came back to this world, I put those thoughts down that had come to me directly from her with that all-loving smile. And this is, in my view, the central message of proof of heaven. You are deeply loved and cherished forever. You have nothing to fear. You will be taken care of. And nothing to fear is very, very critical. Because I saw very much, in my view, how this was not a battle between good and evil, between light and darkness. In fact, there's plenty of evil and darkness in this world, but it's not a force that is against love and light of that infinitely powerful creator. We simply serve as channels to bring that love and light into this world, and it displaces the darkness and evil. The darkness and evil are plenty real in this material realm. And you can also encounter them in those lower spiritual realms, such as I did in that earthworm eye view. The important thing to remember is when you know and fully know that you are a divine, eternal, spiritual being directly connected to that all-powerful creative deity, you have nothing to fear. And that is all you need to know. When you believe that and know that, it enables you to bring that lightness and love into this world in the face of darkness and evil as we perceive it here, and to do so in those spiritual realms and ascend higher and higher towards that oneness with the divine spiritual realms. And what I remember is all of that collapsing down. The material world, this four-dimensional space-time collapsing down. That deeper time of causality uh, in that gateway, that uh, beautiful galley, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the gateway valley uh, where we often are between lives, collapsing down, that higher causality, all of that collapsing down until I finally emerged into this uh, realm that I call the core, infinite inky blackness filled to overflowing with infinite unconditional love of that creator all through eternity and infinity and higher dimensional space. And in that beautiful, all-powerful, infinite love, there was also this brilliant orb of light, brighter than a million stars, that I remember being there and I thought that it was somehow serving as an interpreter or translator a very strong sense of the three of us being there, of that infinite, all-loving, creative power far beyond any naming, far beyond any description. And yes, that deity has no gender. Oprah asked that question, just in case that one's out there. No, that deity has no gender, is completely beyond any words or description. And that's why I think that, that orb of light was there. Now, all of what I'd seen collapsing down, higher dimensional space time, those spiritual realms, every bit of that was like this very complex oversphere that was there as part of the lessons. And when I entered that core realm, I was told, now not in words, this is pure conceptual flow, you're not here to stay. We'll teach you many things. You'll be going back. And I hope you understand by now that when I say the three of us, you know, this infinite, all-powerful, creative source and, and uh, that orb of light and my conscious awareness. This was consciousness far beyond the limited consciousness of Eben Alexander. This was the consciousness we all share, far deeper, far more profound, a direct link to divine, which is in each and every one of us. And you don't have to have a near-death experience to come to know this. Deep meditation and centering prayer um, that's why I do so much of the work with sacred acoustics is to help take that to the next level and help people to meditate in a much deeper fashion because that is how we can come to know these much deeper truths.